In 2004, Bethesda announced it would be working on a game called Fallout 3, which would be largely influenced by the 1988 game Wasteland. It was an ambitious idea, bringing a post-apocalyptic adventure game into an open-world 3D world space, an idea that had never been attempted before. Even more daunting was the fact that this was Bethesda's very first video game that included gunplay. You see, while they had a fair bit of experience making video games, their history was limited to sports titles and the well-known and beloved Elder Scrolls franchise. However, those games didn't include any firearms, which makes sense, as it would seem a bit anachronistic to bring an assault rifle into a world of spells, swords, elves, and dragons. Or a football field. Now, implementing a new combat system that included guns and gunplay was certainly a challenge for Bethesda, and would require a lot of time and effort to develop. But time and effort they committed, and when Fallout 3 was released in 2008, it included a wide arsenal of pistols, shotguns, rifles, submachine guns, and miniguns. There were also energy variants of each, although their usefulness is debated. However, there was a slight problem with the way these firearms performed. For most of them, you couldn't aim down the iron sights. Any attempt to do so would simply bring the gun closer to your face, which is better than nothing, sure, but it's not aiming down sights. And the reason for this is due to the technical limitations of the time. Aiming down the sights of a gun was a novel concept, something that had never been attempted in any video game prior to Fallout 3. And try as they might, Bethesda just couldn't nail it by the time of release. However, they did include a makeshift solution, a jury-rigged patchwork solution, to compensate for the player's inability to, you know, properly shoot the guns they were given. And that solution was VATS, which stands for Virtually Assisted Targeting System. The player would point their gun in the general direction of the enemy, and instead of looking down the sights and lining up a shot and shooting, the game would pause and ask the player who was being shot and in what body part. After these decisions were made, the game would play a quick cinematic shot, representing what aiming down sights would look like if it were able to be done. The player might not be able to look down sights, but their character could. Bethesda was really hoping that the inclusion of these mishmash battle systems would convince players to forgive the lack of iron sight aiming. And it worked. The VAT system was an adequate bypass of technical limitations. The gunplay was lauded by fans and critics alike, so much so that the game was jokingly referred to as Elder Scrolls but with guns. It's hard to imagine deeper praise for the combat system. Its inclusion no doubt contributed to the massive sales figures for the game, grossing over $300 million by the end of 2008. The game was such a financial success that a sequel was inevitable. But as Bethesda was already busy working on Elder Scrolls V, Order of the Phoenix, they handed development to Obsidian Entertainment, a company that included many veterans from Black Isle Studios, the company that made... Uh, let me see here. The Icewind Dale series. Okay, the reasons for this choice aren't clear, but the bottom line is that Bethesda wanted a follow-up entry in the Fallout franchise, and Obsidian was available. So Obsidian started work on Fallout 3's sequel, Fallout 3... Two. Thankfully, they came up with a less confusing title and released Fallout New Vegas in the fall of 2011, and it turned out to be the greatest game of all time. That might sound like an exaggeration, but it's not. Shut up. It revolutionized many of the systems and aspects of the original Fallout 3, with major changes to crafting and modding, better developed and fleshed out companions, complete with their own personal quests, a proper reputation system that expanded the consequences of the player's actions, and most importantly, proper gunplay with aim down iron sights. Hallelujah. It received critical acclaim at the time, and would go on to be included in many top RPG games of all time lists, as it rightly should, despite being a shooter. However, there was one small oversight that would kneecap the game and prevent it from being the absolute golden standard of post-apocalyptic shooters. You see, Obsidian wasn't given a lot of time to produce New Vegas. It's well known that they were only given about 18 months to complete it. And honestly, it's impressive how much they were able to do in the time span they were given. But with little time to improve the controls, they had originally planned to continue using the archaic VAT system, 
going so far as to add extra VATS-centric perks to reward the player for using VATS. After all, if you're going to have a VAT system, you might as well make a good VAT system. However, due to a last-minute crunch period, they were able to finally squeeze in the brand new ability to aim down iron Damn. sights, thus making Fallout the shooter it was always meant to be. However, in their haste to release the game by the required deadline, they didn't remove the VATS combat system for the final release. Whether it was an oversight that was missed in the rush, or something they just didn't have time to fix, we still don't know. But the fact is that with Iron Sights aiming being in the game now, VATS no longer had a reason to be included. But it was. People used it, and they hated it. Take, for example, this GameFAQs post I found, which bemoans the fact VATS is almost completely useless now. And they're right, it is. With the ability to aim down sights, there was no more need for such a clunky, outdated system. Yet, here it is, preserved like a fossilized dinosaur turd. When the general audience got a hold of Fallout New Vegas and saw the VAT system in-game, they rightly assumed that it was supposed to be used during normal gameplay. I mean, for God's sake, they didn't even take out the tutorial pop-ups. So players continued to use this relic of a bygone era, this pale imitation of the true thing, and subsequently use the actual iron sights aiming less. Despite all the effort that was put into the new combat system, the player base was still playing it as if iron sights aiming wasn't there. Now, some might suggest that using VATS is optional. You're never required to use VATS even once from start to finish. But that's not exactly true. For one, if you never once hit the VATS button, a consistent nagging pop-up will frequently flash in the corner of your screen, telling you to do so. The game basically mandates that you try it at least one time. And much like a blossoming drug addiction, the first hit is free. Sure, you don't have to freeze time and completely immobilize your enemies. You don't have to select with pinpoint accuracy where you want to shoot your target. You don't have to be harder to kill due to the innate damage resistance that comes prepackaged with the VAT system. But wouldn't it be nicer if you did? Wouldn't that make everything so much easier? And so, a weird amalgamation of gameplay developed, wherein players would switch between both systems offhandedly. They seamlessly transitioned from the correct iron sight system to the clunky obsolete targeting system that removed player agency and disregarded any actual skill. It doesn't sound too terrible, right? Well, one of the consequences of this is that players forget that Fallout is a shooter. It's not uncommon to see players of this game stand out in the open, ignoring cover that they could easily be hiding behind, and instead attempting to tank multiple gunshots to the face and body. They don't crouch behind chest-high walls, they don't jiggle peek corners, and hell, the vast majority of them don't have a clue about right-hand advantage. Instead, they charge into a cluster of enemies, walking boldly and blindly down open corridors, actively putting themselves in dangerous situations. To be fair, this was a strategy back when VATS was intended to be the primary method of combat, as was the case with Fallout 3, where the VATS combat system bestowed a 75% damage reduction when used, making the player borderline immortal when they behaved like this. However, when the game doesn't revolve around VATS, as is the case with Fallout New Vegas, the issue becomes glaringly apparent. Suddenly, those that had grown accustomed to being unkillable turrets on legs found themselves vulnerable sacks of meat, riddled with bullets and plasma. As a side note, it's worth noting that the development team at Obsidian was promised a payout bonus if the game achieved a score of 85 or more on Metacritic. And I'm not saying that the inclusion of VATS and the confusion it created contributed to them falling a single point short, but I'm certainly speculating it loudly. Anyway, as VATS had become a primary combat mechanic for many players, Obsidian had no choice but to lean into it and expand upon it, including VATS-specific perks in the DLC packs that followed. The virtual-assisted targeting system became synonymous with Fallout, and including it in every subsequent game was now expected. Which brings us to Fallout 4. Bethesda's next-gen Fallout vastly improved and expanded the combat of old. With Iron Sight's aiming being snappier and more responsive, actual combat strategies could now be properly rewarded. Some enemies had distinctive weak points now, rewarding the player for prompt and proper target acquisition. 
Holding your breath to steady your aim was a mechanic that long-range sniper characters now had to utilize. Enemies also take cover now, rewarding players who take their time to line up shots. This behavior also inspired the player to take cover themselves, giving a combat edge to those who prioritize self-preservation and punishing the old strategy of slowly walking towards the enemy while shooting and hoping that they die first. And since enemies now take cover, flushing them out with grenades is a valid strategy. So much so that the enemies will do the same to you, making combat incredibly dynamic, as the cover you had been depending on might be rendered useless based on how the enemy fought. Or consider the Stingwing enemy, a fast and nimble, hostile bug that can be tricky to target. The slow-firing sniper-type player might be able to get the drop on them and finish them off with a well-placed shot. But if they alert the bug to their presence, landing a solid hit will prove to be notably trickier. This in turn makes rapid fire weapons, or even melee weapons, a better tactical choice. That's right, melee weapons now have a practical application. But what if there's a group of Stingwings, and a single kill will alert the rest of them to your presence? Well, a solitary grenade can solve the problem. And we've just discussed one enemy. The Fallout 4 base game has over two dozen different enemy types, with even more added by the two DLC packs. But it wasn't just the enemies that promoted better gunplay and combat strategies. It's also the weapons themselves. Fallout 4 now features craftable weapons, allowing you to fully customize your firearm to meet your various needs. Provided you have the required components, a 10mm pistol can be fitted with a receiver that is more powerful, but less accurate. Which is great for close encounters, such as indoors with tight corridors. Or alternatively, you can fit your pistol with a receiver that is less powerful, but more accurate for those that have a penchant for using it in an open field, slowly taking out their enemies one by one. It can also be modified to do more critical damage, and since critical hits are now performed almost entirely by sneak kills, it encourages and promotes a stealth-based gameplay approach. That's right, stealth now has a practical application too. Fallout 4 improved the combat so well. There honestly wasn't a reason for VATS to exist anymore. Except, it does. The VAT system has become iconic for the Fallout franchise, an unfortunate consequence of not getting rid of it soon enough. And now it needs to be present in every Fallout game, apparently, no matter how nonsensical it might be. Fallout 76! And its inclusion in Fallout 4 is no exception. But instead of just being an overpowered optional mechanic, as with New Vegas, the VAT system in Fallout 4 was truly broken, in terms of being ludicrously strong. All that strategy we just talked about with the Stingwing goes right out the window. With VATS, you pick up a weapon, any weapon will do, you queue a few attacks, and just watch the enemy die. Which gun do you want? Doesn't matter, they all perform the same. No player input is required. And the overhauled stealth system I just mentioned? The one that reserved critical hits for players who adopt a stealth-oriented gameplay style? Uh, you could just use it in VATS as well. And if that weren't enough, Critical hits aren't even random for VATS users anymore. They're now allowed to stockpile critical hits and use them when it would be most helpful. This system is so broken and overpowered, I don't know how anyone could use it, honestly. Why would you choose to play a shooter game and then forego all the shooting? At this point, you might as well just spam the console command complete quest until you see the credits roll. The VATS system is an albatross around the neck of modern Fallout games. The programmers and developers spent so much time creating and perfecting a brilliant system of gunplay and action-oriented combat, only to subvert their own hard work by including a powerful game mechanic that ignores it entirely. You might notice that on this channel, we never use the VAT system, ever. That's because to do so would be hugely disrespectful to the developers who spent their time providing us with a kick-ass combat system. I hope this video has opened a few eyes to the vast improvements of Fallout's steadily improving first-person combat system, and taught some folks the proper way to play Fallout, that is, by disregarding the VAT system entirely. Throw it in the bin, because it's garbage. And if you feel that you can't resist its allure, if the dark side beckons to you and you lack the discipline to resist, if you find yourself giving in to the temptation to cheat by repeatedly stopping time, I've got good news for you, at least if you're on PC. There are mods available for each of these games that disable the VAT system entirely. 
Yes, you can fix the games that Bethesda and Obsidian left broken. And while you're at it, go ahead and download the Iron Sights mod for Fallout 3. That's right, you can now look down the barrel of your gun in the Capital Wasteland, just as God intended. The sole reason for Vats's cursed existence has been nullified. Now, while I'd love for Fallout 5 to have a conspicuous absence of this redundant and unhelpful combat system, I fully expect it to rear its ugly head once again. I'm not the one making the game, so I can't say no. It's out of my hands. But at the very least, I can get the word out to the people, shouting from the rooftops about how Vats makes the Fallout games worse. And if I can make even one person's experience better, if I can prevent just one person from falling into the assisted combat system trap, it'll be worth it. Remember, kids, winners don't use Vats. Just say no. My name is Mike Burnfire, and thank you for coming to my TED Talk.